gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to our show, The East Meets the West. Manatwe, Nawa. Hinchje, Stongo. Hello. Hi, my name is Martin, known as Barbo here in the village. Hello, I'm Jim Sawgrass. I'm going to be representing the tribes of the Eastern United States today. Everybody say tomahawks. tomahawks! Yeah. In the East, a lot of our tomahawks are made of shell. These big conch and whelk shells were broken and put inside sticks, hafted, and they made good tomahawks. In the West, our tomahawks were made out of stone. They used hammers, these rock hammers, to shape the stone into heads, and then these heads were then put into forked sticks and tied together for these uh, not awesome tomahawks. Look at that tomahawk. That's made out of flint. And it's hafted into that handle with a piece of wood that's been carved. So it goes right over top of it. And then some raw hide had been added and laced up the back to tie it in there nice and tight. Tomahawks are used for building things, but not the axe alone. If you chop on a piece of wood with this, the tomahawk will break. So first you had to burn the wood before you could chop on it. Check out this one. This one is a shaped stone here. Uh, with the raw hide wrapped around it, keep it in place. Also, the tomahawks were used as weapons as well. They sure were. Right. And also tools. These are cutting tools for scraping out canoes and scraping animal hides down. So they made lots of tools using the rocks. How about some knives? What do you say we show them some knives? You guys oh, yeah. want to see some knives? Yeah, you guys want to see some knives? Yes! All right. When we were showing you breaking the rocks, well, those rocks that were broken, today people find them even in their backyards. Look at these arrow vents right here. This one I'm going to show you was found by a little girl in her backyard. I went to her school and did a program one day, and she gave it to me as a gift, and I show it to kids all the time, telling them, hey, you never know what's in your backyard. Native people live where you live for thousands of years, and they left their evidence behind. And today, you can see all the arrowheads we've collected to kind of show that story. Some of them we've made, and some of them are very old. Now check out this type of knife. It's an arrowhead uh, implanted in a jawbone. Uh, some of these knives are these knives are really really sharp, so you have to be careful when you handle them because uh, they could really cut deep to your bone. Uh, but this is a really cool knife. Check that out. Coyote. coyote jaw. Yeah, coyote. <laughs> How about this alligator jawbone? Yeah, that's a knife in its own. That's right. Scrape it on a piece of rock like coquina, and you got yourself a dagger. But you can also add something to it. Look at that piece of coral. That's right, coral. Down in the Gulf of Mexico, they would gather the coral, which had uh, made in rock, agatized coral, and they heat treated it and learned how to chip it, and that makes a very fine dagger. Check out this deer antler. Yeah, no, not only you could uh, shape your, your stones uh, to arrowheads with uh, antlers, you can also use it as a handle for your knife. Check out that knife there. Here's one that has a deer's leg bone for the handle and the tendons of the deer as string. And instead of string on this one, I took glue, tree sap glue. Take the sap of a pine tree, crushed up charcoal, and heat them together. You got yourself a hot liquid glue and it works really good. Oh, and check out this knife made from a crocodile leg bone and an obsidian blade. Really sharp. If you'll notice what I'm wearing around my neck here some of the jewelry. Jewelry goes way back. This is more colonial time especially the silver piece but in the old times they made their jewelry with things like vertebrae of the uh, sharks. Uh, that's what these are. Uh, they also use shell. You can see the shell carvings in this display case and shell carvings were worn. It took a long time to carve a piece of shell. First they had to break the shell and scrape it to a smooth edge and then they took things like animals teeth and made little tools. Let me show you one made out of a beaver's jaw. That's a jawbone of a beaver. Beaver's jaw right there. And it fits perfect in my hand just like you might hold a pencil. And it sits so that way that tooth sticks out and I can use it for scratching back and forth over and over and over and over and over until the face would be carved 
into that shell. That marking would tell what your job is. Are you a chief? Maybe your job was to take care of the fire. Maybe you're a hunter. Everybody had a job to do. Making beads, using shells, a lot of times required drills like the pump drill here. By pushing down, it spins the drill back and forth. The string made out of deer skin, and at the very bottom, a sharp piece of flint. And hey, if I don't like that drill bit, I can take it off and put a different one on. Black and Decker would be proud. Everybody say wampum. That's right. Wampum is a shell from the cohog. Cohog is a clam. The food inside is used for chowder, and the shell is made into beautiful beads. That's how we get the purple beads, is that purple spot on the clam, making it valuable. Sometimes the shells were also carved. Elaborate carvings told what a person did in the tribe. And so these shells were kind of like who you are. And back then when they wore them, it was for special occasions. These shells go back to way before the way I'm dressed. I'm dressed in colonial times. By then, hardly anybody was using shells like this anymore. Bright, shiny metal like silver had replaced it. Here in the east, something we had plenty of was shells. Living by the water and the oceans, shells were used to communicate. They could send out warning. They could send messages far away by blowing the shell. The end's been cut off. It's scraped over stones to make it smooth, punctured through. And by blowing it, just like you blow a trumpet, you could send out signals. Speaking of which, I think we just called over that western guy. Look at him. <laughs> Here he comes. Hey, what was that noise? Oh, oh you know what that is, don't you? No, what is it? It's a shell. It comes from the ocean. Ocean? Yeah, you've probably never seen an ocean before, have no, you? No, no, I've seen desert, no well, ocean. Not, ocean's not far away from here, but you don't have to go there. Matter of fact, just put your ear up there and you'll hear it. It's still in there. Yeah, listen to this. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. We got him. Trick me, I could do that. Yeah, this thing's broken. For thousands of years before Columbus arrived, native people were farmers. A lot of the food that the world eats today is foods that came from America. Corn, beans, squash, potatoes, pumpkins, sunflowers, strawberries, blueberries, tomatoes, avocados, peppers. That's just a few. That's not counting all the wild edibles that we enjoy um, as well. But a lot of these were foods that they learned to cultivate and grow around their villages. And as native people stopped following big game and um, times changed, they stayed in one spot more. They built permanent dwellings. Um, they started farming. They started growing seeds. They traded seeds from one hand to the next. And pretty soon, some of these crops had spread all over the Americas, from North America to South America, um, and South America to North America. People were trading with each other, and large um, communities started growing. And to support a big community, you need to have farming and gardening. And so I'd like to show you a couple of farming tools that would have been used long before John Deere came around. First, we got one here that's made out of a piece of flint. I made this one. It's got a handle made of wood and it's tied with raw hide, which is uh, animal skin cut into strips. Here's another one. This one's made out of a shoulder blade from a buffalo. And so, buffalo at once lived here in the eastern United States too. From Maine to Florida, the buffalo used to live. This farming tool is made of a shell. It's copied from one that was drawn by an early explorer who drew pictures and drawings of the natives here in Florida. His name was Jacques Lemoyne, but that's made of shell. And these are all tools for planting our gardens. Once the corn had been harvested, 
it had to be preserved. Some of it would be eaten fresh right away, but a lot of it would be stored. To keep it from rotting, the corn, beans, and squash, and many other vegetables were taken out into the sun and dried. You can see on the drying right here, the corn being dried. And once it's dried, it's very hard, and then it has to be stored. And so these gourds that you see hanging back in here were grown in the garden too, but they weren't really used for food. They were basically containers to hold water, to hold food. They were our storage containers. Maybe today you have plastic containers. Back then people used gourds. And this is something that kept the food fresh and if sealed properly, it could last maybe up to a year. Some of the corn would be uh, put aside for pounding. They would put it in a large hollowed log and uh, the dried corn would then get pounded with a pounder and then it would get dumped into a basket and sifted and if it fell through the little holes it was ready for cooking. This cooking of the corn in a, in a, a soup was known as sofki to the Seminoles but every tribe had its own version of this corn soup. Today we might call it grits. This is a gourd I have here. This was grown in the garden not so much as a food but mainly a container. It held water. It also held food. You could line the inside of this with a pitch glue. You could seal it so it could hold food for up to a year maybe. Uh, this had to get you through the winter time that's dried food that you put aside in the fall. Winter time, spring time until the new garden gives us food which is usually until summer. And so the drying of the food was very important. They would store these in, in uh, shelters that was usually built up on stilts or in a smoky building. The, the stilt house had an opening in the floor that allowed the smoke underneath the house to completely fill the house up with smoke. This kept bugs, mice, and any other animals wanting to get to the food. It kept them out of there, and it kept the food dry, and it also uh, protected it. And so these drying houses or smoke houses are things that we still use today um, in ways of preserving our food. It had to be dried. The meat was dried. The vegetables was dried. If without drying it, there was no refrigerator back then. When animals were killed, nothing got wasted. They carried the animal back to the village and dismembered it and used it pretty much every part. Even things like the guts. <laughs> we used that for fishing bait. Oh, you wasted guts? Yeah. Oh man, that was appetizer. Ooh, not me. Anyways, nothing got thrown away. The animal's skin became some of the softest leather you could ever find by using the brain. Uh, tanning the hide. Brain tanning, animal brain has tannin in it. When rubbed into the hide, it cures it from rotting. We can also do something else with that animal skin, can't we? That's right. You could just uh, stretch the animal skin and scrape the hair and, and, and all the flesh off and dry it in the sun, it'll become rawhide. Uh, with rawhide, you can make uh, drums, like this one right here. There you go. That's right, you can make drums with rawhide. You can make soles for your moccasins of rawhide. That way you're not stepping on stones and hurting your feet. You can also make lacing with rawhide. This is uh, cut into strips, and when it's wet, it stretches a little bit, and as it dries, it tightens back up. So it's perfect for tying things together. And a lot of the primitive tools you'll see today uh, are tied together with rawhide. That's right, speaking of tying things together, we can also use this tendon here, uh, or sinew. Uh, what you do, you dry out the sinew, the tendon here, and you smash it with a hammer, and it separates it through smaller fibers. You can use that to uh, sew up your moccasins. Uh, you could uh, uh, tie the arrowheads on your, your, your arrow shafts. It's a smaller thread. Animal hair was a lot of times used to make things like the headdress I'm wearing today. It's made of animal hairs. It's also made of feathers. Um, sometimes we would tie these on the uh, fishing hooks, make little lures that look like a little bug in the water. And of course animal hair was used in um, making blow darts for shooting at a blow gun. Speaking of animal hair, with our headdresses here, other than the detail they had there, you also had the longer hair, which is the porcupine hair. It's not the ones that stick you, but it's what keeps the porcupine warm. Well, here in the east, it was mainly the deer we hunted, although we did have some buffalo here as well we hunt. But our deer hunt was something else. We might use every bit of that deer. How about his foot? It's been dried stiff, made into a digging tool. I can take the bones out of that deer's leg and break them and make all kinds of picks, hairpins, sewing needles, pins. The deer's bones, every one of the bones in the deer can be used. That's made in, that would be split and carved into a fish hook. 
And this bone right here, that's inside the deer's toenail. It's perfectly shaped for an arrowhead. Make the arrows do their job. And what ties it together? That tendon he was showing you a minute ago. As far as the deer's toenails, animal hooves could be boiled down, melted into glue. Or how about a rattle for the dancing? Nice. Now west, you know, we, we, we use the buffalo a lot. Of course, the buffalo hide we used, originally we used to make the teepees. Uh, we used the hide also as robes for to keep ourselves warm uh, or as bedding. Uh, of course, meat to eat. Uh, we could use the bones of the buffalo. Here's a buffalo, uh, the jawbone of a buffalo, used as a weapon. Woo! Yeah, strike your enemy down. Another thing you could use is the uh, the rib bone of a buffalo. Here, you could use it as a fire starter, as a bow for a, uh, a fire starter bow, and to make your fire. Uh, or you could also carve it down to make a buffalo rib knife. Uh, another thing you could use for uh, alpha buffalo are the the horns. The horns of a buffalo are hollow. So and so you could carve your horn and carve it into like a ladle so you can eat your stew out of your out of your uh, your 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 earthen uh, uh, pit you know, uh, to make your stew in the ground. Um, this one's a, a more decorative stew uh, ladle and uh, also you know spoons because I am civilized uh, a comb guys you know it's, you gotta look good for your ladies and of course a whistle out of buffalo horn. Uh, horn. Backwards. Whoa. That's right. So the buffalo gives you a lot. As we said, everything from the animal got used. How about the fat of the animal made into a candle? Animal fats were used for burning in lamps. Uh, this is a candle made of the deer's fat, and the wick is some grass that's been twisted. When it lights, it burns just like a regular candle. Oh, I got something. What this, you got? this one's for the ladies. All right, you guys, you ladies, you ladies like Gucci bags? That's right, check this out. Oh, yeah, that's our Gucci bag. What's that made out of? Made out of the bladder of the buffalo. The bladder? Yeah. Oh, oh, boy. Waterproof. Ah. Well, the bladders were a lot of times used as buckets to carry water and hold, uh, hold liquid. So, yeah, they used that, too. That's right. Nothing got wasted. Animals' teeth, animals' claws became jewelry. Look at the way I'm dressed. I've got my finest on. These teeth right here... These came from a big alligator, like this guy right there, or bigger. The alligator's teeth were hollowed, but they would fill them up with wax or resin so they wouldn't crack open. They would also use things like bear claws. That's what I'm wearing in my ears, the claws of a black bear. That's right. Animal bones were also carved and to, uh, uh, to make armor as well. This breastplate and this choker is used for armor. It would deflect arrows uh, until the, the you know, introduction of the, the rifle and the gun, and the bullets, of course, went right through them. And now they became ornamental. But yeah. Imagine eating your dinner tonight and having a turtle shell from a big alligator snapping turtle. That's your bowl. Or maybe a turtle shell made into a rattle. Now that's my size of bowl. Yeah? Yeah. Nothing got wasted, that's for sure. The native people had a use for everything. Here in the swamps, we have the alligators. We use every bit of the alligator. I might take his foot, clean out the inside, and turn it into a pocket. That's where I keep my most important things. You know, it goes in there, don't you? What? Keys to the horse. How about the alligator's foot made into a back scratcher? Yeah, big mosquitoes where I live. The meat? Mm-mm. It tastes like, um, no, not chicken, crocodile. But the best part is the drippings. Squeeze out all of his guts, get the juices. Mm-mm. Oh, what does that taste like? It's the best Gatorade you ever had. <sighs>